I just want to welcome everybody again today, and I want to welcome everybody online. I just want to uh, just say uh, it's a pleasure to have you all. It's a pleasure to see you. I'm excited for today. I'm excited for what God is going to do because he's an exciting God. He does things in our life that we don't ever expect. He does things that he just... We think things are going one way, and then all of a sudden he brings us in another way. All right? Sometimes we don't like that. Sometimes we don't like it when God takes us from over here and then puts us over here. But ultimately, what we, when we submit to him, and we say, okay, Lord, I don't understand all of this. My plan wasn't this plan, but it's okay. And then all of a sudden we see later on uh, that his plan was actually the better plan anyway. And we realize, man, I wouldn't have been here today if it wasn't for God taking me from over here and putting me over there. So don't get all uptight if God changes your plans, okay? All right? He's got a better plan. He always does, all right? So as you all know, we've been, we always encourage uh, individuals to come and share their testimony. We, we do this for a reason. Because there is power in our testimonies. It says in Revelations 12:11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You see, our testimonies are a public profession of a spiritual, our spiritual conversion. Okay? They, it's the way we express to the world something that was miraculous, a miracle that has happened in us. They encourage others to also look to see. This is where the salt of the earth comes from. It's through our testimony, through how we allow God to live through us. They're a testimony to the ever-working and ever-changing power of God in us. Do you understand that? It's important that we do. When we all have a testimony, God has given us something. We need not be afraid of sharing that, ever, all right? And there is more ways to share your testimony than just up front. We can share our testimony anywhere, anytime, any place that the Holy Spirit says, go, now, share that word with somebody. So, it's not just for here. I've got a few facts that I'm going to share with you to help you kind of wrap this around your mind, okay? Number one, Pentecost Sunday marks the day when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, all right? Number two, Pentecost Sunday occurs 50 days after Easter, all right? Three, the Bible records the Pentecost in Acts 2, 1 to 13. Four, Pentecost comes 10 days after the ascension of Jesus Christ. All right. Five, Pentecost is also known as the birthday of the church. Did you know that? Okay. Pentecost is, uh, fulfills Jesus' promise to send the counselor and the spirit of truth, as it says in John 16, 5 to 15. Pentecost launches the large scale spreading of the gospel after Jesus' ascension and Acts 2. 41 records after Peter spoke to the crowd after receiving the Holy Spirit over 3,000 people came to the Lord. Number eight, Pentecostal, the Pentecostal movement derives its name from the New Testament event in Acts chapter 2. And number nine, Jesus also celebrated, uh, the Jews also celebrated Pentecost but not for the same reasons as why we celebrate Pentecost, okay? God giving the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai 50 days after the Exodus, and Pentecost in the Jewish tradition takes place 50 days after Passover, okay? So did you catch this, all right? The Exodus was Israel's release from slavery, Right? We all agree with that. We all know the story. Fifty days later, they received what? On Mount Sinai. The, the law, the Ten Commandments. 
Now, in contrast, Easter was the day that Jesus rose from the dead, releasing us from the penalty of the law. All right? And 50 days later, what did we receive on Pentecost? The Holy Spirit. All right? Do you see the difference? You catch that? Well, don't worry. We're going to talk about it as we go on. So... So Pentecost was an annual Jewish festival, also known as the Feast of Weeks and of the Day of of First Fruits, a celebration of the first buds of the harvest, okay? Jewish men were required by the law, all right, to go to Jerusalem, all right, three times each year to celebrate the major feasts, all right? In other words, to give thanks and praise to God, all right? So... This is now that the, the feasts aren't my focus today, all right? But this was the law. They were required to do this. God resided in the temple. This is why the Jewish people had to go to Jerusalem to do this, the, the, to, three times a year to do this, all right? Because God resided there in the temple, all right? That's why. This is why I want to to talk to you about Pentecost today, is because of the amazing gift that God has given us. What actually happened at Pentecost for us, and how does it affect us today? All right? And this is what I want to touch on. I want to start off by reading Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. This is going to be in the uh, New King James Version. All of the scriptures are in the New King James Version, so I'm not going to keep telling you that. <clears throat> okay. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then There appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and, and were confused." because everyone heard them speak in their own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in, their own, in our own language in which we were born? Par- Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Uh, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Frisia and Pelithia, uh, Egypt and all and parts of Libya adjoining Crean visitors or the adjoining Crean visitors, uh, the adjoining Creans, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues and wonderful words of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever should this mean? And then, of course, there were others that were mocking and saying, they are all full of new wine. But Peter had something to say. So Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you, and heed my words, for these are not for these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the days, in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. 
And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? So, Peter had a very strong warning to the mockers in that day, all right? Um, And so it should be, all right? We need to take this seriously. Pentecost may have been the birthplace of the church, but it was also the birth of the beginning of the last days. The last days started at Pentecost, and we're still in the last days, It's still continuing. It's an age. The last days have a beginning and they have an end. And I believe that we are now very close to the end of the last days. Just by virtue of what is going on in this world today. Okay? It's never been like this. But we're not going to get into all that right now. God made that possible through... Okay, so all of these things that Joel had prophesied will come to pass until to pass until the end the end of what the end of the age the end of the last days god made that possible through jesus christ and the gift of the holy spirit that happened on pentecost in the old testament only those who were uniquely um, anointed by god had the holy spirit all right, for a time. The Holy Spirit would come upon them. But under the new covenant, every believer is given the promise of the Father through the active and indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. In Luke 24, 49, it says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from high. Endued with power from on high. So what does this mean for us as the church today? Have we reached the end? No, we haven't because we're still here. So we know that we're not at the end yet. So what it means for us is that we got it. We got it. We have the Holy Spirit. We have everything that we need. We have the power from on high. Don't believe me. It says it in the Bible. Okay? He tells us we have everything that we need. We have access to every spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 1, 4, verse 8 says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Jesus Christ, that you were enriched in everything. What's everything? Everything. Everything. It's all. By him in all utterance and all knowledge. All. All right? Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift. You come short in no gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ who will also confirm you to the end. To the end. All right? The end of what? The end of the age. The age of the end of time. Okay? This is what he's talking about. This is the amazing gift that God has for us. The Holy Spirit and the power of God. We've got it all. It's, we, it's, we've, we've got it. Do you... Here's the question. We know we have it. The question is, do you want it? There's the question. All right? We know we got it, but do you want it? Do you want what God has for you? Do you want everything that God has for you? Yes. Thank you, Pascal. Do you want the gifts that the Holy Spirit has to offer you? You see, not the earthly gifts, 
that we want. That's not the kind of gifts I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the temporal things, the things that come and go. I'm talking about the gifts that we need to fulfill God's ministry plan for our life. That's what I'm talking about. Matthew 24, 14 says, to spread the gospel until the end of the age. It says specifically, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world to witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. It talks about, always talking about the end coming, but what God is doing to prepare us, to prepare the church, to bring us through this period of time, this age that's going to bring us to the end, the end of this age. We got work to do. God has work to do. But guess what? He's doing it through us. We are his vessels. We're the ones that he's going to use if we want it if we will allow him to work through us. You see, there's a lot of people that have a hard time receiving. Some people have a hard time receiving. It's much easier for them to get what they need through their own devices, through their own resources, rather than to depend on somebody else, especially God. Okay? Now, okay, there are people who have absolutely no problem uh, taking from other people and, and allowing them to enable them, all right? Uh, but that's not the people I'm talking about today, okay? So just put them aside. That's not the ones that we're, we're focusing on right now. I'm talking about having a healthy attitude towards receiving when someone offers you a gift, when someone actually wants to help you okay, to help you navigate through life. We all understand the concept of a gift. In order to receive a gift, all right, we have to accept the gift. So if I'm going to give you a gift, you have to say, well, thank you very much. Thank you for that gift. That was very nice of you. I can really use this, you know. But if we don't accept the gift, well, what happens? We, we would almost, we would consider that rude, wouldn't we, in most cultures, all right, if you didn't receive a gift or accept a gift that somebody was giving you, we would consider that to be rude. Why? Because a gift is usually given to enrich somebody's life, to make their life easier, to help them out. Okay? It's as we read in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 5, and then you were enriched in everything by him. We would feel like they didn't appreciate or value the gift if they didn't accept it. Or worse, we would feel that they they didn't appreciate or value the giver. We've seen this. People would say, well, I would rather die than accept help from you. Okay? And some people have. (laughs) So, but this is, this is, that can be our attitude. But praise God that he does not get offended like some of us do. All right? When when we don't, when somebody doesn't accept what we're giving them. All right? He loves us and he blesses us regardless of how we behave, how we act, regardless of our attitude at times in our life. Whether we receive his best or whether we reject it, he still loves us and blesses us in many ways in life. Our Father gave us an amazing gift on the day of Pentecost. An amazing gift. However, when we reject the Holy Spirit and the gifts, we do not operate in the best that God has, had pre-planned for our life. Okay? We miss out on his best. We miss out on some of the things that he had planned for us. Because we said no. One of the reasons why we don't accept the gift of God is because of the responsibilities that come along with the gift. And one of the other reasons... Well, I'm, actually, I don't want to get ahead of myself. There are, there are some gifts that definitely come with responsibilities. Okay? We, sometimes you get a gift. Often, that gift will come with responsibilities. Here's an example. 
What if I gave you a house? Okay? Yeah. Okay? I'm, gi- I'm giving out houses today. Say I gave you a, this amazing house, all right? You're, you're, you're living in a cardboard box under a bridge somewhere, okay? And I see the need, all right? So I say, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this person a house, all right? And this house, is, this is an amazing house, okay? This house has, it's got like a big living room. It's got a nice kitchen. It's got like a, a marbled island. And it's got, it's got like a basement with a full, full basement, uh, carpeted. It's got fireplace. It's got a... Uh, okay, a what? Four bedrooms, three, three, oh, two bathrooms, three piece. Okay, it's got a pool in the backyard. It's got a jacuzzi. It's got, it's got every. Oh, and it has a double garage. And guess what? I'm throwing in a vehicle of your choice as well. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Okay. Say I, say I give all of that to you, and I say, here's the keys. It's yours. Take it. All you have to do is pay the taxes every year and then look after it. Keep it up. All right? So I give you the keys, but you say, "Uh, no, thank you. No. I I, I really don't want to accept this. And I say, why? Why? Why don't you want this? Well, because, you know, like that's a big house and uh, that's got a lot of rooms and and, uh, you know, I'd have to clean that house. I'd have to clean the pool. I'd have to clean the sauna the, or the, the hot tub. I gotta, you know, was, and the car. Oh, my God. I'd have, to, I'd have to get insurance on the car, keep that car clean, keep it repaired. I, I think I'll just go back to my box under the bridge. You know? Like, what would you think of that? I would think that person's crazy. <laughs> you know? It's like, why? Just because you didn't want to accept the responsibilities that go along with the gift. You see where I'm going? A lot of us are like this. All right? We've received a gift from God. God has given us something. He does. You know how I know? Because He's given something to all of us. It says so in the Word. He didn't make mistakes. He never makes mistakes. If he created you and you're here right now, you have a purpose. God has given you a purpose in this world. All right? But you've got you to be willing to accept what it is that he's going to do for you. You have to be able to accept the gifts that he's given you and say, okay, I accept this, Lord. Now do what it is you want to do in me with this gift. We reject gifts from God because of many reasons. Maybe one, because we're afraid, or we just simply don't want the responsibility of that gift. Sometimes it's because, it's kind of, kind of what you said, Stacy, in your message. You said, you know, God gave prophetic words to you, and he gives prophetic words to us, but we don't see those prophetic words come to pass right away. All right? And then we get discouraged and we think, well, God doesn't really, he, that was just, they were just kidding. You know, this wasn't really true. You know, God, is, God doesn't really want to do that for me in my life. You know, and you see, but we don't realize that what God is doing, and I want to, I, I need to make this clear. What God is doing when he holds, God will give you a prophetic word, but he may hold off on it for a time. Why? Why does he do that? I'll tell you why. It's because he's building character. He's building character in you. Why is he building character in you? Because you're going to need that character if you're going to come to the fruition fruition of everything that, that is involved in that gift in your life. You need to have the character that's going to go along with the responsibilities of the gift. Do you follow what I'm saying? We need that. So don't be discouraged when things don't come to pass the way you think they should or when they should in your life. God is doing something in your life. He's building character to get you ready for what it is that he's going to do with you later. And believe me, I'm telling you, you're going to need it because we, we have to, the character has to match up with the gift that God has for you. All right? So don't be afraid of the responsibilities that come with the tarrying 
before the time that the gift is actually comes into fruition in your life. Okay? So if you're thinking that God has not given me a house or God hasn't given me a car or anything like that, well, I'm telling you, you missed the point. <laughs> okay? You totally missed the point. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the giftings that he gives us to enable us to operate in the amazing uh, plan that he has for our life. And we need it. Some of us at some point in our lives, we've heard very, very clearly, either from the Lord himself through dreams or visions or whatever, or we've heard it through a prophetic word somewhere along the line of our, of our, our life with God here on this earth. And, and sometimes it does get discouraging when we don't see those things happen, when we think they should happen, but be encouraged. Remember, he's building character. Not right now. Okay. A word concerning... God will give us a word concerning the direction that God has predestined for you. He'll give that to you. He'll give you a word, um, a word concerning God's ministry plan for your life your ministry plan for your life and some of us have said no thank you lord no thank you i get it but uh i just maybe 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 later i don't know you know we just say no and either because we're afraid or we just simply don't want the responsibility of it and i know that some of you right now are living your life and you're wondering, that you're just not feeling the full completion of, of something. Something's missing. And I honestly believe it could be because you've said no somewhere along your walk. You've said no to God, and there's just something nagging at you, and you're not sure what it is. That's something that you need to explore, something you need to pray about. I believe that one of the biggest reasons why we experience low self-worth and depression in our life is because we have at some point in our life, we've said no to God. All right? We've... But here's the good news. I got some good news now. All right? It's not too late. It is not too late for us to turn things around because God is the God of redemption. Amen? God so wants the best for your life. God so wants you to move forward into the fullness of what you have, all right, and what he has for you, his plan for you, that he will redeem it at any point. Now, you may have to go through a lot of stuff in your life, all right, but he will redeem it in the end if you allow him to. At any time, that we stand up before God and we say, yes, Lord, I am here. Take me and use me. He is good and faithful, and he will use us in a way that will enrich our lives and it will enrich the lives of others around us as well. Okay? I believe this to be true. I know it's true because it's happened with me many times in my life. I've said yes to God and I've said no to God. Okay, many, many times. And I know how both worked out. Okay, so I've been, you've been forewarned. Okay, we can either seek the best that this world has to offer. Sure, we'll have to, we'll have to struggle our way through things. But eventually, you know, with a lot of hard work and, you know, just determination, we'll get it and we'll somewhat maybe be happy, okay? We can do it that way, or we can open ourselves to the best that God has for us in this, in this world, okay? The best that he has for us right now by just allowing him to be our source because he wants to be our source. He wants to be our power, all right? The power that works through us. We may have to accept the responsibilities that come with the gifts that he has for us, okay? But the gifts far outweigh 
the responsibilities, all right? I'm talking from experience. I'm telling you. Hear me now, believe me later, all right? And I'm speaking to you today because about this because I want you to understand this. I want you to get this. God has so much for you. He's got so much for you. You see, God gave his best to us. He gave us his son so that we could have access to him, so we could have access to his power, his authority, that it could work through us in every situation, every area of our life, if we're willing to submit to him and allow him to take the helm of our life. Okay? He wants that for us. You have all that you need, all right? He has everything there for you. The thing is, do you want it? Do you want it? Are you willing to risk surrendering all to him? Are you willing, are you willing to take that risk and take a chance for his best in your life? Because it will be far greater than anything that you could ever do in and of yourself, We can toil, we can struggle, we can try to make it all happen, okay? And we will, in some cases, succeed. But I'll tell you, it's going to be hard work. But I'll tell you, when you you leave it to him, when you allow him to be at the helm, and you're operating through his power, through his peace, through his rest, it's easy. It does become easy. That's where the Christian life is easy. But you've got to get to that point. All right? And it's getting to that point of surrender. So yes, the Christian life is hard until we give up the fight and we allow him to live his life through us. And then we all of a sudden now you see and you experience what it's like on the other side of the cross. See, God never intended us to be carrying our cross every day and just toiling and toiling with that. What he, what he wants is he's trying to love the junk out of us so that we can lay the cross down and be on the other side of it where he is. Sure, things are going to come up. Different situations are going to come up that maybe you thought you gave up and you're going to have to pick that cross up again. And you're going to have to deal with that matter. But then you can lay it down and get to the other side where it's easy where his burden is light, okay? That's what's there for us, guys. That's, what's, that's what God has prepared for us. He doesn't want us to be struggling and toiling. He wants us to be resting and abiding in him. And when we are, man, that's a totally different life. It's a life of peace. It's a life of rest. I'm going to end with... Five, five things. <laughs> I just I got a cramp. <laughs> Number one, seek and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's your friend. He's going to change your life if you allow him to. Stay focused on the Holy Spirit so that you can regularly renew your life and ministry. All right? Because that is where the refreshing is in your life. Number three, exercise your prayer language as part of the spiritual, as part of the Spirit's ministry in your life. Why? Because this is to edify you. When we speak in our holy language, it, is, it brings edification to us. We don't understand it. We don't know. We don't know what God is saying. We don't know what the Holy Spirit's doing exactly. We don't know what we're saying. But I'll tell you what I do know is that when you're done, you're going to feel refreshed because that's where we get edification from. It's through the Holy Spirit. Number four, expect your spirit-filled response, uh, sorry, your spirit-filled relationship with Jesus to help speak boldly with courage and spiritual understanding. All right? We need this. We need the Holy Spirit to fill us with that boldness that we need to move forward. And then number five, share Jesus through your personal testimonies. Don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid to share with others the goodness of God and what he's done in your life. All right? We should all be able to give a testimony in one minute. One minute. Don't worry, yours was, yours was supposed to be longer. <laughs> so, but when somebody comes to you and says, and they're, they're meeting you for the first time, and, you're, and you know you have an opportunity, the Holy Spirit's saying, this would be a good time to share your, your, your personal testimony with this person. You'll know, because the Holy Spirit will give you the, the utterance. He'll, he'll, he'll let you know. Don't be afraid to say, hey, listen, can I tell you just a little bit about me? This is where I came from. And then in one minute, summarize it. We should all have that in our back pocket right there so that we, we're ready to give it. And then see what the Holy Spirit will do. You're planting seeds. You're planting seeds in people's lives that need, that need desperately to know the Holy Spirit and know who God is. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that on this Pentecost Sunday, Lord, we can just look to you and, and thank you, Father, for the goodness that you, that you have given us, Lord, everything that you've bestowed on us. Lord, for everything that you've done for us. Lord, for how you continue to do it. Father, we thank you for it. Thank you for your ever-present Holy Spirit in our life. Thank you, Father, that even though we may walk away from you, even though we may ignore you, even though, Lord, we may follow our own agenda, Lord, that you still love us, you still bless us, you still want us to, to you still draw us to you, Father. Thank you, Father, for that. Lord, I pray a blessing over this church today, Father, that you would just, uh, just show up in their lives and that they would just see you, that this revelation knowledge of who you are, this realization of how powerful you are and how powerful your Holy Spirit is, Lord, in us. Lord, that we would all not be afraid to surrender to you, Father, to allow you to be the master, the, the, the lead of our life. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. Father, touch us in a way that we've never been touched before. Father, creating us a heart that is pure and holy for you, Lord, that wants you more than anything, that desires you more than anything. Father, fill us with a passion, Lord, that would want to seek you every minute of this day, Father, every minute of every day of our life. Lord, may you be the focus. Lord, may we be walking in the Spirit and not after the flesh, Lord. Lord, that your spirit would be alive and active through us. Lord, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, if there's any of you that feel that you've missed the boat, that you just haven't, you, you've said no somewhere along the line in your life, and you, you, wanna, you, you just want prayer, Okay, because, come up and let us pray with you, okay? It's not too late. It isn't too late. God has more for you. He wants to give you more. He just wants to know that you want it. He just wants to know that you're willing to, to reach out your hand and say, yes, Lord, give it to me. I'll take responsibility for it because I know that you're going to help me through it. I know that you have every, you'll provide every resource that I need to get me to where it is that you want me to be. And I don't even care about the timeline, Lord. I don't care because I know that you're going to get me there when you want me there, when you know I'm ready to be there. Because I know you're developing character in me. I know that you're getting me ready for the huge responsibility that you have set out before me. Because I know that you love me and you want the best for me. And I trust you. Take my life. I give it to you. Because you already gave me yours. And your life is way better than my life. I've already tried my life. It doesn't work. But I'll take your life. Thank you for your life, Jesus. And then just let him work in you. Amen?